What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here and today we're going to be taking a little break of the uh, football content here for a story time with Treeb and ladies and gentlemen this story is wild. This story is about how the police got called over a simple coolie cup ladies and gentlemen. You're probably wondering how does that happen? What happened? Were you drunk? Did you go to jail? Were you in the back seat of the cop car? What'd you say to the cop? What happened? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to answer all those questions right now because this is how a coolie cup turned into the cops being called. So, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you're kicking back, relaxing, making sure you got your coffee poured. Today, I actually got some uh, mango peach V8 juice because uh, I'm trying to cut back on the coffee these days and we don't have any tea, so this is what I'd be sipping on. It's not bad. It's a little tangy, but I mean, it's not in any way, shape, or form that bad. So, ladies and gentlemen, how this story starts is we all gather up to go to Colton's house. Colton's house is what we like to call the trap home. Everybody loves to go to Colton's house. That's where we hang out. That's where we drink. That's where we socialize. That's where the boys hang out. That's where the whole group of the crew AF hangs out. Has a good time. You bring your girlfriend. You don't. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't. This time I did bring Bailey. Bailey was along uh, for the ride in this one. Now a little backstory on this Cooley Cup situation, because I know you guys are probably wondering, oh, what does this Cooley Cup situation have to do with the cops getting called? So the Cooley Cup, me and Bailey, who uh, Bailey has family. Her grandpa lives in Dixie, Idaho. Now I know you guys all 100% have no idea where that is and good luck finding it <laughs> it's like in the middle of nowhere it's a good two three four ish hours from where uh, i'm from and you know we go there uh for a certain event called dixie days and if you don't live in a small town in idaho i'm pretty sure you don't know what that is so i'll explain what dixie days is is basically you know you have a softball game you have an egg toss, you know, everything like that. Just little games, a silent auction and everything. And just everybody in the town, the small town gathers up. Everybody visiting gathers up uh, to just have a little fun with the softball game, whether that be the egg toss, you know, whatever you're going to do. There's also a rubber ducky race where, you know, they threw like over 100 rubber duckies and you bought certain ones and they would cruise down the, uh, down the creek and you would pick uh, which one you would think you would win, you know, throw five bucks on it. You'd spend like 20 bucks by five ducks. And a little side story on that one for Dixie Days. When when Bailey told me there was duck races, she told me the night before, I was in my bed prepping, thinking to myself, what can, like, what what makes a fast duck? Like, what am I, what am I going to be judging these ducks on? You know, I'm thinking of like, am I going to get the smaller duck because they're going to be more aerodynamic and they can just, they can just go, or am I going to get the bigger duck? Because, you know, there's probably going to be a decent amount of ducks, and, you know, you probably got the bigger duck, and he's probably going to be, you know, using his fucking duck shoulders, being able to swim down the creek a little bit faster than the other ones. And then I show up to Dixie Days, and it's fucking rubber duckies. It's not even real ducks. Your boy, your boy was literally staying up, you know, the night before thinking, what am I going to judge these ducks on? Because I'm going to win some money on these ducks. And uh, I truly think to this day that's what threw me off, and that's why I didn't end up winning that, is because there were no, uh, <laughs> there's there they weren't real ducks, you know, <laughs> they were they were just rubber duckies, and you know I didn't, you know I spent twenty bucks to get five ducks, and I did not pick the fastest duck, damn it. Well, everybody else, there was a lot of ducks in there, and it was a really game of chance, but trust me, dude, if they were racing real ducks, I would have had an idea. Now, after getting a little bit sidetracked from from that and the old duck races, uh, the reason the origin of the Cooley Cup came from Dixie Days. Uh, Smokey the Bear showed up. The old mascot for Smokey the Bear showed up. He was giving out free Cooley Cups. You know, only you can prevent forest fires. You know, my, my brother would always say that for some reason. He's a big Smokey the Bear fan, I guess. But, you know, we got those Cooley Cups. Uh, me, and, me and Bailey did. Just a little, you know, thing like that, you know keep your beer warm <laughs> or well you know so your hands don't get cold with a cold beer you know what i'm saying so you know bailey got one i got one and uh didn't think much of it we ended up coming back from dixie days and i think about two weeks later uh i think i just went and i brought the uh, smoky the bear coolie cup and i left it at colton's and this is where this is where the whole controversy starts <laughs> is at 
is at Colton's house after I leave the Smoking the Bear coolie there. Because Colton starts using it, and it, it starts to become Colton's favorite coolie cup. And then a couple days later, Bailey comes over, notices that Colton's using the coolie cup, and is like, hey, why are you using my coolie cup? You know, like, and then Colton's like, it's mine. Trevin gave it to me. And, you know, I'm fucking around. I'm playing along. Like, yeah, I gave it to Colton. And so Bailey's mad at me, and then I told him I didn't really give it to Colton, but Colton's not giving it back. You know, he's being stubborn. It's whatever. But uh, <clears throat> so Colton doesn't give it back. So a couple nights later, Colton's not using that coolie cup. We know exactly where it is. So we're going to heist it to steal it back. We're trying, we're trying to steal that coolie cup back. And Bailey manages to do that one night on a Saturday night. And uh, there's a decent amount of people there. I'm not going to go over everybody that was there, but I know for a fact that, uh, you know, my boy Mike was there. So, uh, and he'll play a factor in the story a little later. But basically what happened was, was Bailey took the coolie cup and then, you know, me being the silly boy that I am, I'm recording it with the coolie cup and I'm like, Hey guys, we, we pulled off the heist of the century boys, you know, and I sent it to the group chat that all of us are in. And, you know, obviously Colton's in that group chat. Me and Bailey were literally right by the car and I was about to, I was about to peace out and leave, you know, with Bailey. Uh, but my, my other friend Layton, who I have 732 subscribers, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, none of them are Layton. Give them shit in the comments. I just, like, if all the comment section is, is fuck you, Layton, for not subscribing to your boy, I'd be fine with that. <laughs> you know, I want two or three people to comment that, bare minimum, so I can fuck with them a little bit more. But, regardless of that, Layton showed up, and I was like, hey, bro, what's up? You know, I'm just mingling with him. I'm like, Colton's probably sleeping, you know, he's not gonna see it. And what happens next? Your boy fucking runs. Just, <laughs> I'll never, I will literally never, ever forget just how fast that boy was running from his house to get to Bailey's car. Me and Bailey are like, stop talking, like, get in the car, get in the car. So we're in the car, Bailey's starting the car up. And then uh, my boy Colton, freaking, uh, he comes in, he's, he's banging on the windows like, give me my coolie cup back, give me my coolie cup back. We're not, we're not, we have, we locked the doors, we're not going to unlock them. So this boy hops onto the hood of Bailey's car. When well, he's on the hood of Bailey's car, you know, my drunk ass was telling her, go, 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 just drive with him on there, just drive with him on there. So, <laughs> he's on the he's on the hood of Bailey's car, so right right in front of the windshield. And <clears throat> so, me and me and her decided, all right, we're just going to reverse out and just, just have him on there. Because he's definitely going to jump off when we just put it in reverse, right? No. That, <laughs> that kid stayed on the windshield. And I was like, just drive. He'll, he'll come off eventually. So, <laughs> we start driving. We go down the street. This kid's yelling. Like, I'm telling you, he's yelling, screaming. He's like, help, help, 911, help. You know, just just, just screeching, man. And, and you know, at the time, I didn't think anything of it. I just thought it was really funny. You know, I was laughing. I was getting, I was cracked up about it. You know, it was funny. And so, you know, eventually, you know, we drive. And then we go down, and we're down a main road right now. We got Colton. On the Bailey's car, Bailey can't see because Colton's just laying on the windshield. You know, it's dangerous. It's not really, it's not really, uh, it's not really smart to do. And of course, by this time, none of us, none of us were drunk, especially Bailey, because she was driving. So you know, you don't have to ask that in the comments section. We were being, we were being really uh, smart about it. Um, but Colton was, <laughs> you know, when he was on the end of the car, Colton was. I was a little bit, but you know, obviously Bailey wasn't. She was driving, so. You know, she she just thought it'd be funny, so we're driving down this main road, and we decided to turn around, and take him back home. And you know, on the way home, then this is this is the kicker here. This is the kicker here. This is when you know, freaking, this is how we mess around. You know, this is it's gonna be a weird way, and it's gonna be hard to explain because I, most friends don't mess around like this. But this is how we mess around. Colton on the way there, you know, he had this butterfly knife. Just fucking around, tapping it on the window. You know, he's just like, oh, I'm going to get you. You know, and he's not actually going to do anything, obviously. So, you know, he's tapping that while we're parked. We, we come back around. We park in Colton's house. And he's, just, he's just tapping it on the window. We're just fucking with him. We're like, you won't do shit. You know, he <laughs> can get off the car. And then, you know, the other people that are there are like, dude, there's cops coming down the street. And we're like, no, there's not. Because cause Colton starts running off. Because <laughs> Colton starts kind of running off. And I was like... There's no way he's just fucking around. He's just trying to get us out. And then here comes the cop car fucking whoop, pulling right in to my boy's house. So I didn't, 
I didn't I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to think. So the cop shows up. I stay in the car. <laughs> and this fucking guy literally fucking he doesn't he doesn't go and grab anything, but he goes up to Colton and just goes, put your hands in the air where I can see him. Colton <laughs> That's the that's my favorite part of the story. I know Colt must have just been scared shitless at the time because the cops just like put your hands in the air. Fuck Colton's hands right here, man. Like and they didn't leave for a solid seven minutes. And then he's like, <laughs> she's like, what have you guys been doing? He's like, you guys been driving with him on on your car for the last however long? And we're like, yeah, that was us, whatever. And then he goes, we have calls of uh, you guys are disturbing the peace, whatever, from yelling, and you know I got that. But then but then the cop goes. Someone here have a taser? And we're like, what? No one here has a taser. Like, like what? Someone called over a taser? Like, I don't understand how that, that happened. And then, so, you know, the, we had to clear the whole thing with the taser. There wasn't a taser. And that, uh, oh, and then I forgot, I forgot, <laughs> I forgot one key important detail. When, when Colton shot his hands in the air, he, he basically threw the knife. He threw the knife on the ground and he put his hands in the air. And the knife is just fucking chilling on the ground where he is. And then the cop's like, I'm not dumb. I see the knife. And then and then freaking goes up to Colt and he's like, Why do you have why are you chasing these guys around with a knife? And he I, I intervene a little bit and I'm like I'm like, this is just how we mess around. I was like, we're just we were just literally playing around with each other. We weren't ever gonna do anything serious. And then he's like, This is how you mess around. It's a pretty fucked up way to mess around. Me and Colton literally verbatim at the same time. We're like, we know. We know, we know, we know that this probably isn't the best way to be, to be messing around or whatever. And then, uh, so, you know, he, he took all of our IDs. He asked us who owned the place. And obviously Colton said, uh, his dad. So, you know, the cop comes back and we're thinking, dude, we're getting like MICs, MIPs or something, you know, like we're, we, we just, we, we weren't, we weren't thinking highly of anything. He comes in, he goes, He's like, how pissed would your dad be to find out that, you know, you got this or you got that? And he's like, oh, really pissed. He's like, well, go ahead and call your dad, and then we'll be fine. So the cop was chill about it. And prior to that, my other friend Mike came out. Was, he's majoring in criminal justice. And and he kind of talked the cop down a little bit. And then, you know, I kind of got him to laugh a little bit too early on uh, in the conversation. So it was there was a lot of things leading up to that to where the cop was going to be cool. Either way, I think I think he understood that we were all just kids having a good time. But the the fact that you know he, he made Colton put his hands in the air and stuff that that situation really escalated uh, more than it needed to at that point. But it was it was funny and it's definitely one story that you know from from, from my boys that I'm just I'm never ever gonna forget. And that was how a coolie cup got the cops called. What'd you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. You can find me on Facebook at Treep Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Trevon Pixley or at Treep Talks as well. Or follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley. Also, if you're feeling also generous, you can go ahead and donate on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Treep Talks. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. That'll be just right back. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.